Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at Ka, pKa and the pH of weak acids. By the end of this lesson then you should be able to do the following. You should be able to describe a weak acid, construct an expression for Ka given a weak acid, calculate the pH of a weak acid, but also the concentration and Ka of a weak acid given data, and finally calculate pKa values. Weak acids, then, are acids which only partially dissociate. We can think about this if we imagine an acid, HA, where the acid is the hydrogen ion and the salt of that acid is the A. Now, if this was to partially dissociate, we can describe that with our reversible arrows. And we get H+. Plus and A minus. All of these are in aqueous solution, but for the weak acid, what we can say is that the majority of the species are normally as HA, and only part of it dissociates form H plus and A minus. Examples here are classically carboxylic acids. So methanoic acid will partially dissociate into the hydrogen ion and the carboxylate ion. So make sure you're happy with how we describe the salts of the acid, we have the methanoic acid, so this side is the acid. We have the proton, or the hydrogen ion. And finally, we have what we describe as the salt of the acid. And if we're talking about the carboxylic acids, we're talking about the carboxylate ion. So in this case, methanoate ion. And that can be stabilized with things like sodium or potassium. If you want to look again at naming uh, carboxylate ions, just look at the previous video that's coming up on the link now. We're now going to have a look then at the acid dissociation constant. And we're going to start off with our imaginary weak acid again of HA in a reversible reaction with H plus and A minus. Now we've said already that this is AQ, so we could rewrite this in fact as HA plus H2O is going to give us H3O plus plus the A minus. Now if we were to write a equilibrium constant for this reaction, we would have KC is equal to the concentration of the products multiplied by the concentration of the rest of the products all to the power of the stoichiometry which is one in this case over the acid and over the water concentrations now here like we saw with kw the value for the concentration of water is going to be very much greater than anything else in our equations. And therefore, within the expression, we can assume that the water concentration is going to remain constant. And we can rewrite our expression to be Kc is multiplied by concentration of H2O is equal to H3O plus oh, multiplied by the salt over the concentration of the acid. What we in fact do is we give this a new expression and we call this Ka. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this lower half and rewrite the expression for Ka for this weak acid. 
So here, my important expression is the acid dissociation constant, Ka, is equal to H plus squared, multiplied by A minus squared, all over the concentration of H. So there's my important equation. The other thing to note, for a weak acid that has not got any other base mixed with it, we can simplify this equation further. Since the Ka for the weak acid is expressed as the concentration of the products over the reactants, and for most uh, weak acids that we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at monoprotic weak acids. We also know that the concentration of the hydrogen ions is going to be equivalent to the concentration of the salt ions. This is for an unmixed weak acid which is only dissolved in water. And what this gives rise to is the fact that these two values are equivalent. Because of this, we can simplify Ka further. And we can say that H plus multiplied by A minus is equivalent to the hydrogen ions squared over the concentration of HA. These two equations are going to be absolutely fundamental into our calculations that we do in future lessons. So we're now going to use these ideas to work out the pH of a weak acid. And we're going to look at this question here, which says find the pH of an 0.02 mole per decimeter cube solution of propanoic acid at 298 Kelvin. The Ka for propanoic acid at this temperature is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5 mole per decimeter cubed. So the first thing to do to write an expression here for Ka, where we're going to have the hydrogen ions multiplied by the salt of the propanoic acid, which is propanoate, and we're going to divide that by the concentration here of the acid. Now, as we've just seen before, that this for a weak acid, we can simplify to H plus squared over propanoic acid. And so our first thing to do is just to rearrange our equation to give us the hydrogen ion concentration. which is going to be Ka multiplied by the concentration of the propanoic acid. And that is all square rooted. And so our hydrogen ion concentration then is going to be 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by the concentration which is 0 0.02 square root, which is going to give us an answer here of 5.1 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per decimeter cubed. So there's our first part to this question. The second part to this question then is to use the pH equals minus log of H plus. I'm just going to move over here. pH is equal to minus log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So we put this into our calculator. And remembering to give our answer to two decimal places we come up with 3.29 as the pH. 
So we could be asked to get the concentration from a pH value of a weak acid. So here we'll just have a quick look at how we do that. So we've got here the pH of an ethanoic acid. Solution is 3.02 at 298 Kelvin. Calculate the molar concentration of this solution. KO of ethanoic acid is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 mole dm minus 3 at 298 Kelvin. So in this reaction, or this question, the first thing to do is to work back from our pH to determine the hydrogen ion concentration. So here we're going to say that H plus is equal to 10 to the minus pH, which in this case we're going to say is 10 to the minus of 3.02 and we're going to put that into our calculators and we get 9.5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per decimeter cubed And once we've got the H plus concentration, we can now use our value for Ka that we've had before. And I'm going to write out my expression for Ka again here, because this is going to be equal to the hydrogen ion concentration. I'm going to do the simplified version, squared over the ethanoic acid concentration. So if I rewrite this, I can calculate my ethanoic acid concentration to be equal to the H plus squared over the Ka value. So we have 9.5 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 1.75 times 10 to the minus 3. The top value is squared. And we end up with a concentration there of 0 0.052 moles per decimeter cubed. So it's also possible for us to calculate Ka given these equations. In this example, we're going to look at a solution of HCN, which has got a concentration of 0.162 moles per decimeter cube with a pH of 5.050 at 298 Kelvin. What's the value for Ka for HCN at 298 Kelvin? Well, the first thing to do here again is to find out or give it right, get an expression for Ka, which is H plus squared, as we said before, over the concentration of HCN. Well, We've got the HCN concentration, but we haven't got the hydrogen ion concentration. But we do have here the pH, which gives us a way to get the hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to 10 to the minus pH. We're going to put that into our calculators, 5.050, which is going to give us 8.91. Times 10 to the minus 6 moles per decimeter cubed. We now have a value for the hydrogen ion concentration and we can calculate Ka from the fact that we've got the hydrogen ion concentration here to be 8.91 times 10 to the minus 6 all squared over the concentration here of HCN, which we've got as. 0.162 and overall what we end up with is a value of 4.90 times 10 to the minus 10 moles per decimeter cubed. As you can see there, when we've been through a lot of those calculations, the value for Ka can vary quite substantially. And therefore, to make our calculations and just to dealing with numbers a bit easier, quite often the value for Ka is actually given in the form of pKa. Our equation here is almost identical to the 
pH calculation where pKa to the power of the acid dissociation constant is described as the minus log of Ka and again to revert back to a value for Ka we can describe this as 10 to the minus pKa. So we can interconvert between pKa and Ka in any given equation. Just to note, the smaller the pKa value, the stronger the acid. On other words, the position of equilibrium lies further to the side of dissociation of hydrogen ions. And the larger the pKa value, the weaker the acid. Questions will often ask you to interconvert between pKa and Ka. So we'll just look at a couple of examples to make sure we're happy with that. So just to check here, we might have an acid with a Ka value, which is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeter cubed. To convert that to pKa, we simply take the minus log of Ka. And so we have a pKa value here of 6.824. Indeed, the other way around here, if we had a pKa value for an acid to be equal to 4, Point three two zero. We put this in our ten to the minus four point three two zero. So it would have a Ka equal to four point seven nine times ten to the minus five moles dm minus three. Okay, so by the end of this lesson now, you should be able to describe a weak acid, construct an expression for Ka given a weak acid, calculate the pH of a weak acid, and also the concentration of a weak acid, and the Ka of a weak acid given data, and also calculate pKa values. That's all for now. I look forward to seeing you next time.